There are billions of galaxies in the universe with billions and billions of stars. And in one of these galaxies, our home galaxy, the Milky Way, there is one star, our home star, the Sun, which is the most important star for us. Many civilizations have worshipped the Sun. Throughout the centuries we have come to understand the nature of solar activity, the importance for the Earth and its role for our everyday life. Energy produced by thermonuclear fusion in the Sun's core is transmitted outwards through its radiative and convection zones and is emitted as light from the solar surface, the photosphere. Sun has changed its output over geological time, but it also varies on a number of shorter timescales. The most obvious manifestation of solar variability are sunspots, dark regions on the Sun's surface. Over 400 years of instrumental sunspot observations show that the number and total area of sunspots wax and wane every 11 years or so. These 11-year sunspot cycles are superposed on a longer century scale variation and there are periods lasting several decades with very few or no sunspots at all. Measurements of the solar irradiance during the last four decades demonstrate that the abundance of sunspots is related to the brightness of the sun. More spots, more light emitted. The variations are very small, but it is still not clear what their importance is for the terrestrial system. On the 1st of September 1859, amateur astronomer Richard Carrington was routinely observing sunspots when he noticed a sudden intense flash of light from the sun. This was the first instrumental observation of a solar flare. 17 hours later, magnetometers around the globe registered a strong disturbance of the Earth's magnetic field, an event known as geomagnetic storm. After Newton's theory of gravity, this was the first phenomenon proving the Sun's influence on Earth and is considered the birth of solar terrestrial physics. In the years to follow, it was found that the number and area of sunspots are correlated to the number and intensity of both solar flares and geomagnetic storms. Now we know that the strongest geomagnetic storms are caused by something that accompanies solar flares, coronal mass ejections, outbursts of plasma with embedded solar magnetic fields, which interact with the Earth's magnetic field. Like sunspots, coronal mass ejections and solar coronal holes are related to the sun's magnetic field. The most beautiful expression of a geomagnetic storm is the aurora caused by the collision of energetic charged particles from the solar wind with atoms in the upper atmosphere. Aurora is observed at high northern and southern latitudes, but during very strong geomagnetic storms like the Carrington's event, it can be seen as latitudes as low as 30 degrees. However, the effects of solar activity on the Earth is more than just beautiful sights. Our technological civilization is increasingly vulnerable to this so-called space weather phenomena. Solar flares disrupt long-range radio communications and GPS navigation, can lead to equipment damage that puts satellites out of operation and can threaten astronauts' life. Geomagnetic storms can collapse the whole electric power systems. Much progress in our understanding of solar variability and its terrestrial impacts has been achieved so far, but we still need to be able to predict solar flares and coronal mass ejections. We still need to understand their propagation throughout the space between the Sun and the Earth, and we need to go from modeling to predictions of what happens in the Earth's magnetosphere and how it affects space-borne and ground-based technological systems. Longer-term solar activity variations, the so-called space climate, are correlated with variations in the terrestrial climate. Little ice ages are found to coincide with periods of long-term decrease in solar activity, while periods of high solar activity marked warmer climate and economic prosperity. But despite the extensive research for already more than two centuries, the influence of solar variability on the Earth's climate is far from being understood. This understanding is extremely important in order to evaluate the relative impact of natural and anthropogenic causes of climatic changes and to adapt the most appropriate approach to either mitigate or prevent their consequences. The last sunspot minimum was the deepest and longest one since the beginning of the 20th century and was followed by a very low sunspot maximum. Is this the beginning of a deep minimum in solar activity, like the ones coinciding with little ice ages, or is it just a return to normal solar behavior 
after the historically high activity in the last decades. And to what extent were our theories of solar activity and its terrestrial impacts based on observations during the recent Grand Solar Activity Maximum proved true in the beginning period of a sleepy sun? SCOSTEP, Scientific Committee on Solar Terrestrial Physics, is an interdisciplinary body of the International Council for Science, ICSU. The ICSU motto is Strengthening International Science for the Benefit of Society. SCOSTEP focuses on the science of Sun-Earth connection relevant to life and society on Earth. Following a highly successful program known as CAWSES, Climate and Weather of the Sun-Earth System, that just ended SCOSTEP is launching its new scientific program Varsity, Variability of the Sun and its Terrestrial Impact on January 13, 2014. Solar terrestrial scientists from all over the world participate in the Varsity program that will run for next five years to understand why the sun is so weak these days and how it will affect Earth and its space environment. Interested? Want to join? Please visit us at www.varsity.org.